Paul had been arrested and he asked to speak to Caesar, the leader of the Roman Empire. Caesar was in Rome, so Paul got on a ship with other prisoners going there. Strong winds and rain tossed the ship. The ship's crew waited until the wind calmed to sail around the island of Crete. But the strong wind pushed the ship. The crew pulled the lifeboat on board so it would not float away. They tied ropes around the ship to hold it together in the storm. The next day, the crew threw things overboard. The wind and rain did not stop for many days. The men on the ship were afraid they would die. One night, God sent an angel to Paul. The angel told Paul to not be afraid. God would save the lives of everyone on the ship. Paul told everyone on board, Take courage, men. I believe God will do what he said. We will not die, but we will have to run the ship onto an island. As the ship drifted toward the island of Malta, some of the sailors tried to escape in their lifeboat. No, Paul told them. Unless you stay on the ship, you won't be saved. The men listened to Paul and stayed. They cut the ropes of the lifeboat and let it float away. Paul told everyone to eat. He thanked God for the food. Then the crew raised the sails and headed toward the beach on the island. Suddenly, the ship struck a sandbar and stopped moving. Waves crashed into the ship and it began to break into pieces. An officer ordered everyone to swim to shore. Some swam and others clung to pieces of the ship. They all made it safely to shore. God saved all of their lives. The people on the island built a fire for them. As Paul gathered firewood, a viper bit his hand. The people thought he was a murderer and would die from the viper. When nothing happened, they decided Paul was a god. Paul healed a man, and others came to be healed too. Three months later, Paul got on another ship and sailed to Rome. Paul was still a prisoner, but instead of going to jail, he was allowed to live in his own rented house. A soldier stayed with him to guard him. Paul lived in that house for two years and welcomed anyone who visited him. All day, he told his visitors about the kingdom of God and tried to persuade them to believe in Jesus. Hello everyone, I'm Mac Truman, and that's true man, and I'm here at the Mooseberry Academy for the very, very, very gifted students, including my sis, Paris. Please, don't talk about me. I'm on the hunt for the true truth about Christianity, and if my understanding is correct, which it probably isn't, once you become a Christian, everything is smooth sailing from there. That means that if something bad happens to you, it's probably because you weren't being a good enough Christian. <laughs> What's so funny? Dude, <laughs> you don't even know what you're talking about. Plenty of bad things happen to Christians. I should know. I do stuff to them all the time. She put mice in a locker where I was doing my cheese experiment. I got an F because of her. Oops. She switched materials so that I made a sundress out of rough burlap instead of soft cotton. Oops. Yeah, and she invented guardrails to stop spontaneous stunts from happening. Okay, that one wasn't me. So maybe bad things do happen to Christians. But if God's on your side, you must just fix the bad stuff quick and easy. I 
actually, my cheese experiment was totally spoiled, so I had no way to prove any of my hypothesis. I for real got an F. Well, then, then God zapped the computer with the grades and turned it into an A. God did not change my grade. After the burlap incident, my teacher of my fashion forward class made me go back and retake fashion basics. And then and that's when God cloned you so that you didn't have to take the whole class over again. Like, no. I actually went back and retook fashion basics. Bad things happen to Christians, but their lives are still better? So, how is this possible? One time, I rocket skated over a ravine full of porcupines while wearing a giant balloon. In the process, I broke my last pair of rocket skates into 18 different pieces. I couldn't afford to buy another pair or hire someone to repair this pair. So I spent all summer fixing my skates all by myself. It was a pain and it took forever. But kablamo. Life was good because I wasn't alone. The porcupines were with you? What? No, they went back to P.T. Tuttle's Porcupine Ranch. Your sister was with you. No. I was with you? You know you weren't. Then who? God. He was with me then, he's with me now. Problema. He's always been with me. Knowing that God is with us no matter what we face is the single greatest comfort any person could ask for. Think about it. He's the creator of the universe, from solar systems to the hairs on our head. He knows everything. If you're gonna go through something sad or unfair or scary or whatever, don't you want the creator of everything close to you? And there you have it. Everyone has troubles, including Christians. But facing those troubles is easier when you know that God is in control. Until next time, I'm back true.